Uh, this report here, it does kind of seem like ammo for the Trump administration as they uh, and Mr. Trump have painted the U.S. infrastructure as being um, very meager and struggling and in need of improvement. What does this report add on to what we already know about the country? Well, this report comes out every four years. The American Society of Civil Engineers does a survey of 16 different infrastructure sectors and comes up with grades for each one and an overall grade. And this shows that essentially we haven't made much progress. The overall grade is D plus. It was the same in 2013. And you've seen some improvement in some of the sectors and some declines in others. And overall just shows a need to do more to invest in infrastructure. And like you said, uh, the report does an estimate of what the need is to bring the overall grade up to a B, which is what the society sort of determines to be adequate. And it's like $4.59 trillion. And when you count in the available funding that's expected, there's a $2 trillion shortfall. All right, so some pretty massive numbers there. Uh, the president, of course, has said that he plans to invest a trillion dollars in U.S. infrastructure, but he's been very short on details. Uh, as we know, there's a lot of things that require uh, improvement and funding. What has the president personally expressed interest in? He did meet with Elon Musk, for instance. Right, and we heard that part of what they talked about, he had questions about the Hyperloop project that Elon Musk is pursuing. Um, and we've heard the president talk about a whole range of different types of infrastructure, from roads, bridges, airports, tunnels, even schools, some things you might not necessarily think of as infrastructure. And one of the interesting pieces of this overall process will be how do we define infrastructure? What ultimately gets uh, included in this proposal for funding? Uh, what do we decide is important enough? Because the needs are great and you could count a lot of different things as, as infrastructure. In fact, you're seeing a push now from a lot of different sectors trying to get in on the money, so to speak. Uh, for example, we've heard suggestions that uh, national parks should be counted as infrastructure because they need funding and they should get some money out of this initiative. Mark, we've heard about the potential for uh, PPP, private public partnership here, as being a conduit for this infrastructure work to get done. Is that a uh, realistic focus that, uh, that should be here? Is it sort of part of the overall picture? Can a lot, of be, a lot of it be driven by that? It does seem like Trump is very keen on making that happen. Yeah, there's definitely going to be a push, and, and, and Trump himself has said this, to get public-private partnerships more in the mix. And the idea is to leverage more of the private sector, that we have trillions of dollars in capital out there that's waiting and wanting to invest and hasn't found a home in U.S. infrastructure projects. The issue is going to be, I think, what is the ultimate mix going to be between public and private funding in whatever package does emerge and get approved through Congress? Because there are, are folks who would tell you that while public-private partnerships are a great tool and are useful for some projects, they're not feasible or even possible in some cases. For example, if you have a, a rural area or an area that's uh, uh, low population or income, you're probably not going to be able to get a, a toll or a user fee or some kind of revenue stream that would make a public-private partnership work. So the argument, even among some Republicans, is that you still need to have the government pay for some of this mm. infrastructure improvement that we need to have done. Yep. Mark, can you tell us what went wrong with President Obama's attempt to jumpstart infrastructure? Because it's not as if infrastructure is a Republican policy. Uh, the Democratic administration also attempted it, but didn't get very far in it. What are the lessons learned from that effort? Well, part of what uh, President Obama was trying to do with his stimulus prod uh, proposal in 2009 was jumpstart the economy. So in that case, he wanted to see things done quickly, you know, get money flowing into these projects and people working to get some economic boost. The problem he ran into is he sort of promised that there would be, you know, millions of, of jobs for shovel-ready projects was how he characterized it. And it turns out there really wasn't anything to do as much as shovel-ready, that it takes time to get the reviews and permits for these projects. You can do shorter-term kind of improvements, but sort of the really economy-boosting, job-generating projects take time to develop. Um, so one of the things, you know, that the Democrats have tried to push is, you know, the idea that we need to have more direct spending, direct funding that is predictable for uh, the ability to get planning done and get projects, more projects in the pipeline. Uh, obviously, the, the Republican leadership in Congress wants to see more private spending, which is a little harder to get into the longer range projects. So that's going to be the big push in Congress is, again, what is that mix between public and private sources to pay for this trillion dollars of work? Everybody seems to agree is needed.